folks, and welcome to The Daily Coin. My name is Rory, and today is Wednesday, March the 29th, 2017, and it is a great honor and very distinct pleasure to welcome back to the show Mr. Michael Noonan from edgetraderplus.com. Michael, welcome back. It's always great to be with you, Rory. I always look forward to it. Well, I'm glad that you're here. We have a lot to talk about, so we're just going to jump right in. Let's begin. I think you're doing so well with all your interviews, and uh, you, you appear to keep on growing and uh, getting uh, higher quality and caliber people. Well, I'm trying, and thank you very much for the for the kind words. I really appreciate that. I mean, it's... Uh, Richly deserved. Well, uh, it's very humbling. Thank you. Uh, uh, I would I would love to see more of your work, my friend. Yeah. I know you I know you have uh different feelings uh, about about that about what's going on in the markets and or so-called markets I should say and Yeah, exactly. You know, it it's hard to be repetitive uh Rory and and I don't subscribe to it, although I know a lot of people do because they have to uh cater to their uh, subscription base and everything. I don't have one, so I don't have to cater to anybody. Uh and it just it, it seems absurd to just be repeat the same old stuff. Well, Every, but you, for, everyone's been looking for a, uh, a rally for the last four years. Hasn't come. Speaking I want to I I ask you about that in just a moment. But yep. as far as the way that I see it, Michael, and the way that I see your work, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, you, you have a, if I remember correctly, you look at the market in a much smaller window. You're not looking at, you know, through the end of 2017 or, you know, into 2018, 2019 or any of that, you're really more looking at the weekly and monthly and quarterly as far as the movement. Is that right? Pretty much so. Yes. And even the, uh, the quarterly and weekly are just done for, uh, support of the, uh, the current developing market activity. It, It just shows, you know, the, the quarterly and the monthly tell you this market ain't going anywhere. So all these people are brouhaha and, you know, dramatic, uh, prices yet to come, uh, yet to come is probably not emphasized enough. Well, and, and so you, you strictly, your work is strictly focused on uh, weekly charts. Is that right? No, uh, well, weekly and daily I use the, the daily, daily. Daily is more of a trigger, and then when it when it comes close to trigger, triggering, I uh, trickle down into the hourly and sometimes ten minute charts to uh, to trigger entries. But it's 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 focused on on what the weekly and daily charts are saying, and I look for uh, some kind of synchronicity uh, between the two, and and especially when it goes along with the monthly and even the the quarterly charts. And they've been they've been on target for the last uh, three years. You know, uh, I was calling for higher prices for a while. And I, you know, finally I stopped on. I think in 2014, I said, you know, 2014 looks like 2013. I think 2015 is probably going to be a repeat, which it turned out to be. And the same turned out for 2016, and uh, here we are in 2017. What is so, what is it? So you're seeing the the some of the same patterns this was no year patterns. so far. There were no patterns, uh, Rory, that indicated the change in trend. Okay. Zero. Or no pattern to say that the bottom is has finally been been in and confirmed. Now it could be that December 2016 may be it. That that's a possibility, but it's not been confirmed. Okay. And what bottom is that? What what's what number are it, you looking at? Around eleven seventy, I think, uh, in in uh, in gold and what was silver? Ten uh, ten something or eleven something? I'm sorry. 10, 11. <laughs> I've got my I've got my gold uh, uh, numbers uh, mixed up with silver. Uh, okay. It looks like around uh, the thirteen fifty area for silver. Okay, so you think that there's a possibility, not that you're saying that that is going to happen, but it's a possibility. Well, I'm saying, no, I'm saying is uh, yeah, it's a possibility. All I'm saying is it hasn't yet been confirmed. Now we've since had a, uh, a higher a two series of higher highs and. Now, it, with the correction into uh, twenty uh, in, into December of last year, we've had a higher low. Uh, now, all we need is a higher high. That means taking out uh, uh, just above twenty one hundred for uh, um, silver and whatever the commensurate price was uh, was for gold. Okay. Yeah, twenty one twenty five seems to be the number on the upside for silver. 
that would uh, signal that things are, are have a have a chance to rally. And, well, it would, it would create a, a a higher high that would confirm the December uh, 2015 as <clears throat> as a more than likely uh, sustainable low. There could be some corrective activity and still more sideways action, uh, but at that juncture, uh, you know, I would start looking at play only from the long side. What and are, the, what are what are the sharks uh, saying this week? Because I mean, I I, I wrote about it uh, Monday. As far as you know, we had that when the markets opened Sunday night, it, everything you know, gold and silver both popped up, and then silver has just been kind of grinding higher. Uh, yeah, every day. Yeah. I mean, and it, it it's uh, it's kind of leveled off right now, but I think that it's still going to continue picking up. You know, just a little bit throughout the rest of the week. I mean, is that kind of what the charts are telling you, or what are they well, telling you for for the next uh, couple of days? Two factors on the week I was looking at. That was the, the uh, November uh, spill when Trump was elected. There was a huge nosedive in both silver and gold. Yep. Uh, and then in uh, at the end of no at the end of February there was another uh, two week a sharp two week drop in gold from uh, twelve uh, around twelve fifty six I think to just under twelve hundred. And, and we've been uh, that was a two week uh, uh, waterfall, and for the last three weeks we've been rallying against that two week uh, uh, drop. Uh, there's still it's about it's almost a fifty percent retracement uh, from the uh, uh, I think it was May high of uh, twenty sixteen and the and the December low at uh, twenty uh, uh, twenty fifteen. I'm sorry, uh, the May high to the uh, December low of this year, twenty sixteen. The, about a halfway retracement is about where we are right now. So that tells me that the market, uh, a halfway retracement is, is not an absolute, it's just a general guide. If the market is in, in a bull market, the 50% uh, uh, point tends to be, uh, go, they go through it uh, almost not with impunity, but they go through it readily. When you're in a down market and the rally stops at a 50, at or around a 50% level, that tells you that there's still some residual uh, uh, sellers in charge and the market is uh, still marking time. Well, we know there are some sellers in, in charge. I mean, uh, these criminals that uh, have now been confirmed to be criminals in a court of law as far as the rigging of the markets. I mean, uh, well, you'll never see them in a court of law anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. These these, uh, these purported criminals are the ones who who run the monetary system. I mean, you're talking about the IMF, and then their their parent court, the uh, the BIS, uh, and they they do all this uh, this stuff, and 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 they even use the exchange stabilization fund as as cover for uh, throwing money and and and, and trying to uh, suppress the market. They're running out of uh, uh, time, and I can't say they're running out of money because they just keep printing trillions and trillions, so that, that's not the issue. It's the Chinese that are in charge. Right. Yeah, and I think they're they're allowing this uh, market to play out because they're just buying cheap, and, and uh, they know that the price is, uh, the, 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 the price for from the few top-level people that write about uh, the physical market, the physical uh, pricing is higher uh, than the than the paper market. And and sometimes there's even uh, they have they have time uh, filling physical demand. So there's uh, there are two different markets, and and the Chinese uh, uh, are are controlling the whole thing. Uh, and when they're done with whatever they're doing, and, and and I'm sure they're eviscerating the United States and 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 the uh, and the Western financial world in the process, uh, they'll let the market run. How high? I don't know. They're already in a, in a digital market uh, for for their currencies. The entire uh, Chinese uh, uh, financial system is digitized, uh, and they've got they they've allowed they've allowed ownership of their uh, people in general to buy silver and gold, and in fact encouraged it. Yes. I don't I, I don't know that they want too much independence of their own population having a high price gold and silver. So it's it's uh, to me it's a question mark as to how how far and how high this market will run once it's. Uh, uh, once the, they cut loose from being tethered to the manipulation of the Western uh, financiers, financiers. Well, I'm going to have to disagree with you on them. Oh, well, you not, can not not wanting their citizenry to have, you know, uh, wealth held in gold and silver, even though their currency and their, like you said, their markets are all digitized at this point. I think that 
most of the financial and economist people that are running China's markets, I believe that a lot of them, if not most of them, were Western trained. So they understand having a, a strong middle class is beneficial for the country overall. So they, well, they understand that benefits them, the oligarchs, the people that are in charge, how, how that benefits them as well. If the people, A, have enough money to be able to buy the trinkets and do the things that they want them to do, then it just it, it feeds itself. Well, uh, I understand what you're saying, but you have to realize in 1933, the reason why they, they they collected all the gold and silver is because when people have gold and silver, they have financial independence. When they have financial independence, they are not dependent upon the government. The government can't withstand, or nor does it want to tolerate that in any way. And when I mentioned about that with the Chinese, having independence, they want, yes, they want them to have money to buy the trinkets, but they want the digital money. They don't want gold and silver. Because that's what gives them independence, and that's why the globalists uh, put the final nail in the coffin for gold and silver in uh, 1933 for gold, and then in 1971 for silver, uh, 64 rather for silver, uh, because they they want people totally dependent upon the uh, uh, fiat financial system. But why gold, would the that doesn't gold, make sense as far as what the Chinese are doing? Because they do encourage their citizens. That's to, why I say. I, that's why I say I'm, I'm a little perplexed that how. Okay. how they have they have encouraged the uh, their population, uh, but they don't they don't want their population to be smart and and well healed financially because then they won't be dependent upon the uh, the uh, the fiat the digitalized system and I agree that the Westerners are, I've been saying this for the past couple of years those Westerners the globalists are switching horses from west to east and they're yes. going to do the same thing to China that they did to this country and they'll do it yeah and then. Probably ride that horse for uh, the next hundred, uh, exactly. hundred fifty years, and yes. then yeah. change again. Yeah, they do things over a decade time frame. Kranzler and I were talking the other day. You know, we do that uh, shadow of truth. We do that a couple times a week. Yeah. We on Monday we were talking about the, about the markets, and I made a comment about the waking up one morning and the Dow Jones futures being being off. You know two or three thousand points and as the market opens there there would be some kind of glitch and they would have to close the market you know in order to get the glitch straightened out and why is it michael that you that you only see a glitch when the market is blowing up to the downside i'm sorry the uh, equities markets blowing up to the downside but never to the upside it can rally as high as it wants, as quickly as it wants, to the upside, but never to the downside. Everything comes to a grinding halt when the markets collapse. Look what happened in 2007, 2008, into 2009. The, everything collapsed. The whole, the whole system, you know, there, there was chaos. Uh, the, so they want to control that chaos. You know, I, I think when, we, when this market tops, and I, we're, we're in the process of that, but uh, it's like the gold and silver market bottoming. It takes a long time. Uh, the next drop is, is going to be much worse in 2008, much worse. Yeah, do you, I mean, if it drops from where it is right now, I think it's at 21,000 or something, some stupid number. And if it drops back down to where it was in 2008, 2009, at 6,000, that's, that's a very significant drop. Oh, sure. It, and the drop will be significant. You know, I, I haven't looked at the stock market for uh, a couple of years. I just stopped following it because it's been so heavily manipulated to the upside. I, you know, I thought, it, you know, why follow an artificial market? You can't use intelligence against uh, an artificial uh, a market that makes no sense. You know, that, that whole propaganda machine called the Dow Jones Industrial Average doesn't play a part anymore. No, no, no it, it never really has. I mean, it's, it's such a narrow definition of what the market is, 30, uh, 30 stocks that they they jettison the losers as quickly as they uh, they go sour and replace it with something else. So that's been artificially manipulated for decades. Uh, the S&P, uh, you know, if you've got most stocks in the S&P, I think, are, are much below 
probably uh, even half of what uh, uh, the market is. Uh, you've got just a few that are keeping keeping a few stocks, relatively a handful of stocks that are keeping that market afloat. Most of the stocks that comprise the S&P are, are not doing very well at all. Amazon, right. Netflix, Google, those are the ones that are that are Apple. Those are the ones that are keeping it keeping it afloat. There's a, yep. two or three other ones, but not not many. Like you said, just a handful. What do you, what do you think about what's happening with on the geopolitical scene as far as the situation in Syria? Do you see Trump and the warmongers? At the Pentagon escalating that? Are they going to get their war that they so desperately want with Russia or China or both? Are they going to finally get that, do you think, within the next next two years? How do you see the geopolitical scene uh, unfolding? Or are you following that? I'm sure you're following it, but well, you know, I'm aware of it. Uh, you're asking a question that if, if I had the answer to, I'd be probably in Trump's place not by now. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm a little disappointed that, that Trump has not taken a more active role. And I did a, an article uh, a month or two back, and I said, right now, I said, all politicians are, are, are liars and, and connivers, and I'm giving a pass to uh, Trump, May, and Putin for now. And that's because uh, Theresa May uh, has, has uh, backed up Brexit. Putin, I think, has been a stalwart against the, uh, of the globalists for, uh, uh, for quite a long time. And, and Trump was uh, going against the, uh, the status quo in this country that's so heavily entrenched. And it appears that uh, he may be uh, subject to the same fate as Barack Obama. Uh, he... You know, he was going against uh, uh, all the globalists, yet he hired, and uh, he had no choice to hire all these Goldman Sachs people in, in pretty high cabinet positions. The, uh, the, the United States has been in bankruptcy since 1933, and they're, they're controlled by the uh, Secretary of the Treasury as the, as the bankruptcy judge, as it were. And everybody has to do, when you're in bankruptcy, uh, every corporation has to do whatever the bankruptcy judge dictates. And that includes Trump. You know, and and people, a lot of people aren't aware of, of the uh, of this political uh, situation that the United States is in, uh, and so this is why you're seeing him hire people from Goldman Sachs, and this is why Goldman Sachs has been in control of the government for decades uh, because of the bankruptcy, and, and they run the whole show, the uh, the voting and the Congress and the uh, House of Representatives is, is all um, bread and circuses. But it's it's done to appease the uh, the people and to keep them in control, and they're they're doing more and more now to to keep control because I think they're they're in in part possibly losing control. <laughs> you know, they are losing control. Some of it, anyway. Some of it, yes, some of it. This is true, but they're not going to lose the whole thing. They no. they they are too entrenched. They are too in control. And uh, they've got too much that they can. Uh, they're in the process of jettisoning the United States. You know, we're we're history. Um, there's nothing that anybody in this country can do. And I think Trump is is Trump is the last uh, the last attempt. So if 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 and when you see him fail, and it's probably uh, when and not if, um, you'll know that uh, we don't stand a chance. It's 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 been it's been done and over for a few decades now. I've said for a long time that. I believe that he was he was selected over Hillary because he's a deal maker, and I believe that that part of the deal that he made was that he would he would give the globalists their federalized police force here in the United States, and but with he, Hillary, he, it was he moves no. inches he moves an inch or two closer to that every single day. Yeah, with Hillary, it was a done deal. I I don't think uh, he made a, he made a, a deal with him while he was running. He was as much a surprise as Brexit was when Brexit won and 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 turned everybody on upside down. Uh, the uh, Clinton losing is is akin to Brexit winning. Nobody nobody in their right mind expected that Brexit would ever occur. In fact, it did. Nobody in their right mind, including me, thought Trump stood a chance. Yeah. And and. Hillary, yeah, it was a shock, a shock to everybody. And I don't think the globalists had control over that. Okay. I think it was a shock to them. And they've been, 
uh, let me just plug this in. They've been running in circles uh, ever since trying to do damage control. They'll, they'll get their control back. You know, they haven't lost everything, but there's, there's more damage control that they have to uh, tidy up. Well, I, I know that Trump loves the police state. He has been very clear about that, and that's been the part of of his of everything about him that has scared me more than anything. That's the part that I don't like about him at all. I'm, I don't. Period. Yep. I don't well, accept I, it. I, I, yeah, I don't know that he's much different than Obama in that regard, and and that that to me is just a message that the uh, the globalists are still in charge uh, in that in that arena. With the military, uh, you know, they, they, there may be competing factions within the military on a national, international scale. But in terms of uh, military and the militarization of the police force in this country, there's there's no issue. Right. They're, they're just, they just continue to lock down. They continue to uh, pervasive, pervasively uh, in, intrude on, on rights and, and stamp on, stamp on uh, uh, people's regard for anything that uh, has to do with law doesn't law does not apply law applies to the people it doesn't apply to those applying it correct and yeah. you're right the, the police state is becoming a, a, a lot more uh, entrenched and uh, you know nothing nothing will be done to stop it it's like you know the police are are the equivalent of uh, the Nazi brown shirts yes it's exactly I've compared them to the brown shirts on a number of occasions. And will continue to do so. And what these yeah. what these people don't understand is that they will be discarded ex as quickly and as efficiently as the brown shirts were. Do you think that the rubber bands, chewing gum, and band aids are going to be able to hold this whole financial and economic nightmare together? another 18 to 24 months. I mean, I'm not asking you to do a crystal ball, anything I'm just asking your opinion, because my opinion is yeah. it's coming, it's coming apart a lot quicker each day. And bad news is now becoming bad news. I'm not saying that all the bad news is bad news at this point, but a lot of it is. And it's, I, I think they can, with, they can, Hold on for as long as they want. They will. They will create something, uh, in, in, and whether it's QE or ZERP or something else, uh, uh, they'll come up with something. Uh, and it, it may be more militarization. It may be well. We're going to take all the uh, uh, to keep the financial markets afloat. We're going to take all of your uh, pensions and everything and turn them into government bonds so that you don't lose anything. Right. <laughs> It's for your protection. <laughs> for your protection. I'll, I'll, always for your protection. If it weren't for your protection, who who else would look out after you? Right. So, you, you certainly don't have enough intelligence to do it yourself. Absolutely. <laughs> you elected so, me, right? <laughs> instead of having uh, your, instead of holding stocks, we're going to give you gov government bonds because stocks may collapse 50, 60 percent. Government bonds are already worthless, so they're not going to collapse any more than what they're worth. You know, so they will they will do a, any number of games to keep this thing afloat. And can they keep it afloat another year or two? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up the uh, the pension funds because they've been in the news a lot uh, the last well, really the last year. And I, I think that 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 you're absolutely right that you know Obama made the announcement of Myra. I think it was in 2012 at the State of the Union address. Right. You know, here's Myra. That's uh, my uh, retirement account, and he described it as you as you said. These are government bonds, and and I think that I think that it's a distinct possibility that we will wake up one morning and there will be a, a unscheduled announcement that. Sure, your sure. 401k and your IRA has been converted conveniently for you. Exactly. And that's that all that will do is buy them more time. That's all. And, you know, you, you, you know, anyone, I don't have pensions or, or IRA money. I, I no. quit that game long ago, so I'm not concerned about it. Right. Um, 
you know, so, so you know, the IRA, the gold and silver is, is the is the safest equivalent for for protection against that. Um, but all they all they will do is buy time, and and people are are perversely ignorant and and naive, naive and you know, I guess they choose to remain so because the the alternative, uh, otherwise known as the truth, is too hard to comprehend, too hard to to want or, or accept. Exactly. And so they'll. They'll deal. They'll deal with whatever the government says, and you know it's for our protection. Nobody, you know, very few people. What happened to Wall? You know, uh, Occupy Wall Street. Huge, huge movement disappeared almost virtually overnight. Yep, squashed it's, like a. You know, once the, yeah, when the when they when the New York bankers uh, took over the uh, New York State Police. Um, and they put down the they they squashed the entire riot and nobody stood a chance. They sp- paste, pepper sprayed people, put them in jail. You know they this is this is what we're looking at on a broader scale uh, for any type of uh, uh, dissent against the government. Use that as a prototype. So it doesn't matter what the uh, situation will be. Uh, the government will come in and squelch everything, and nobody is doing anything about it. Nothing. Nobody. Nothing which is really kind of the sad part. And then speaking of which, did you see uh, Bozina, B-O-Z-E-N-A? Yeah, the Bozina riot gear, yeah. I mean, there's another example uh, of your, of your the, the government is doing everything they can to build up their arsenal. And whether the people are aware of this or, or not, the Bozina thing is, is just yet another example. I mean, I was surprised. It, you got this horrific looking... A uh, big plate coming at you, and then you look behind it. You've got this little Range Rover truck running the deal. <laughs> yeah, it was operated by like a a, a pickup truck, but it's got uh, it's got uh, uh, cameras all over. So it, it's all robotized. You got the, the spray guns and everything that can knock people uh, off their feet. Uh, the government is well prepared, and they keep preparing. They've been preparing to uh, uh, steal everyone's uh, pension wealth for years. Yes. They've got the, all the laws have been in place. The militarization of the police has, has, has it, it just continues to grow, and nobody can stop it. Nobody. Do you, th- do you think that if there if if there was a large enough uprising that that we could overpower it, or do you think that it would just become civil war? It would be it would truly become us against them. You've already got a, a civil war of, of sorts. I'd, I'd, maybe a better description would be an insurrection between the... Insurrection, uh, that is much better. Uh, well, but not on the level you're thinking of. You're seeing an insurrection w- within the government. You were seeing the losers, the Democratic losers, going after Trump, doing everything they can to get him out of power. That, to me, is an insurrection. A civil war from the from the population, I don't think would stand a chance. Uh, I, I look at, uh, for example, uh, last year when they had uh, some of the big fests in Chicago. Uh, and my niece's, uh, I'm sorry, my my uh, stepdaughter's uh, husband is is police undercover, and uh, he's any time that anybody got under control, they they just squelched everything. And the crowds, you know, crowds, crowd mentality, you know, what crowd mentality is like it. it crowds have been uh, the way they are for forever. Their mentality is, is weak. Uh, they're like, like they're like sheep uh, and lemmings. And you take away the uh, the dissenters and they're they become very docile. They don't want to get hurt. They don't want to go to jail. They don't want to do anything, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't see I don't see any civil civil uh, uh, riots coming in to overpower the, the uh, militarized police. They don't. They don't have the organization, uh, and I just don't see it happening. I'd be if it does and it, and it succeeded. I'd be the the first one to say I'm shocked. That's where we would lose. Is that we're not organized. We're look, not organized uh, at all. That's why I said, look what happened with Occupy Wall Street. Use it as your prototypical uh, 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 put down of insurrections, of, of of riots. There was there was some organization within uh, Occupy Wall Street, but it was quickly squelched. There wasn't enough, and there wasn't enough staying pe- uh, staying power behind people supporting it. It's, it's a shame, but th- it is what it is. It is what it is. Well, Michael, why don't you tell them about what you do over there at, at edgetraderplus.com? 
All I do is look at the markets, uh, and, and again, I rely upon what the market activity is telling me. And not, I don't, I never pay attention to what other people have to say. Uh, I don't read other commentaries uh, because they base uh, most of them base their, if, if not on more typical technical analysis, drawing lines, uh, etc., et support and trend lines. I don't even use those, uh, or they use uh, you know outdated, outmoded supply and demand factors. That's what I do. I, I look at what the market is, is saying and not what people are saying about the market. See, and that's what I, that's what I appreciate about, about your work. And that's why I miss it when you don't write. And I know that you feel like that it's, that it's redundant and that, that it's not, you don't have anything new to say when in fact you do. I mean, what you just said is very refreshing. I'd have to say this thing every week, you know, because it hasn't changed for the last uh, uh, 60, 70, 80 weeks. We've been in a sideways transition, and you know those are the the hardest to deal with. You don't offer any kind of subscription service or anything like that, do you? No, I just give away whatever I have. You know, it, I have I charge nothing. I don't have any. Uh, 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 I don't uh, have ads or anything on my site. It's it's always been an independent effort on my part. Uh, you know, I, I've had a uh, a pretty loyal uh, small base, you know, uh, with me for the last couple of years, but it hasn't been growing because I cut back on my my sending out information. And you do put out uh, the information as far as you, the trades that you're involved in, and yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll make, I'll make trade recommendations. And to yep. me, there's a difference between gold and silver than there are between corn, wheat, and and crude oil. They are they are all price uh, uh, determined. And they're all determined, all that price is determined by market activity, which is a function of supply and demand, actual supply and demand, and, and not purported uh, news, uh, what's happening and being promoted by the governments and the various uh, interested parties. So that, that I put out, I put out uh, health information sometimes on how to keep healthy and, and avoid the, uh, the monolithic uh, uh, big pharma industry. Michael, it's been, it's been a pleasure uh, speaking with you. And you can find all of Michael's work and trade recommendations over at uh, edgetraderplus.com. Michael, thank you very much for all your time today. It's always a delight to chat with you, Rory.